Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on our first base again. And if this is the first time you uh, are joining us, you can go back and look at part one where we built this base, where we've got our turbine, our ore detector, our battery, our basic assembler, and our basic refinery. So today we are going to look at trying to improve that and then possibly building a mining ship because that's what really drastically improves the rate at which you can mine things, but then also progress and get it into space. But let's get started. Sweet, so if we press G to go into our menu and we want to, one important thing that we're missing right now is a storage. So medium storage containers, they only, if you look in the top right hand corner, they only show this small. So this one is only a large, but if we look here, when I go over the medium, it only is for small. So I can do a small cargo container. That's That works, or I can do a large one. So if I press Control 2 to change my toolbar menu, I'm going to drag that down. I don't want to build a big one yet. But then, also like I showed you in the, beginning, or the very end of the last one, I'm going to put this in the build planner so it puts everything that I need in there. Then we're going to come over here, press K, look at our production, see where we're at as far as things. We are, we've got tons of iron, we are really low on nickel though. So it'd actually probably be worth my time to go out and mine some nickel. Um, let's see, can we see any nickel? Not exactly. But over there is where I had some iron that I found, so I might go try over there first. Because I think all these other little spots are just where the meteorites came in and smashed the ground up and left some stuff. So it's a little easier to come over here. I know for a fact that I've got some iron here, but normally they're in groups, and so it'll be more than just just iron normally. Um, except for maybe this location. Apparently, all we have is iron here. So, let's take off so you can kind of see. I'll get up there a ways. Try to show you again. So you can see there's kind of some gray here. There's some gray up here, maybe. Oh, still iron. Let's get some altitude behind us so we can try to look around. Um, now that it's getting dark, it's going to be a little harder to find what we're looking for. But it won't be impossible. Actually, right here, so on the snow, it kind of shows up as like this gold, if I remember correctly. Let's see if my memory serves us well or not. Oh, and we found some nickel. So we've got nickel, ice, cobalt. I'm going to need some of all of that. So I'm going to open my GPS menu again, and we're going to do a new from the current position. And I'm going to put... Uh, cobalt and nickel on here just so that I know what's here and then we're gonna dig down because I'm eventually gonna need to come back for that cobalt that's gonna be super important for building motors and for atmospheric thrusters and all sorts of good stuff like that so nickel if we want to make sure that we have our, our lights on, and then for some reason my visor is closed again, which I don't need it to be closed at the moment. So nickel, if I remember correctly, is not blue. It's kind of like an off gray, if I remember correctly. Kind of like that. So let's see, we've got some ice. Just a bunch of ice. Ice isn't bad, you can run, so you've got like hydrogen motors and stuff. Uh, we'll see, so this looks like it could be nickel. So hydrogen motors are really useful 
if you have a lot of ice that's available. So, I'm going to come up here and just try to empty out everything that I just picked up. I'm not as concerned about the ice right now. I will come back for the ice, but ice is one of those resources that you will eventually need. Okay, so it's this yellow kind of looking stuff, I'm pretty sure is the... Oh, showed up as stone. more stone and ice. Let's just clean this all out. Okay. Oh, so there it is. So yeah, it is this kind of goldish looking stone. We can pick it all up. If I remember holding the F key. Pick up as we're drilling with the left trigger, or the left uh, mouse click. That's how you drill and have it drop the rocks. So as you notice, though, something else we didn't really talk about in the last video was our power level. As you're using like the power tools, your grinder, your welder, your drill, that power is going to go down. So in order to to fill that up again. All you have to do is you go sit in a chair that's on a station or a like a, any sort of station that has power at it. So since I've got that wooden turbine, I can go go hang out there and sit in that chair and it'll restock that for me. So I want to completely fill up. I don't want to have to come back for a while. Nickel's one of those things that you'd use quite a bit of, but it's not an excessive resource. Sweet. So we're going to drop all this back into our main base here into the refinery and let it do its thing so we're going to just drop this into our basic refinery it'll start working and converting nickel and it looks like there's something oh yeah is this detector component was still in the line I want to come over here and just kind of look at this battery it'll recharge within so it's essentially discharging. Normally it says fully discharging. So especially since we're running the refinery, that's that's pretty normal to have it be. So now that I'm in the chair, my battery is getting recharged. If I press K, I can look at my battery. And I can look at everything else and see. So right now my wind turbine is putting out the max it possibly can. My battery still isn't charging very fast. So at this point, it might be worth my time, it probably is, to actually go through and build another wind turbine. So, let's, I know I need some interior plates for a wind turbine, so let's, um, I've laid down a thousand. Do just over a hundred of those. And I will grab everything that I think I might need from in here as we're building stuff up. Sweet. So let's, before I build my storage container, because we're, we're still new enough that having a storage container is not the biggest thing. So we're going to build this just on the other side. And let's see if I have all my resources. I need some construction components. So we'll come back down here. You always need more construction components. Having an excess of something isn't necessarily a bad thing unless resources are really tight. So, you know, building 10,000 steel girders or steel plates is, you know, a little excessive. But if it's, you know, or like the solar panels, I'm, I don't build a ton of solar panels, so like building 10,000 solar panels is not worth it. But whereas the steel plates and the interior plates and you know your motors and stuff that is definitely worth your time if you're not building anything else 
to, you know, just stack a couple of those in there and just have it going. These are all resources you use for pretty much everything. And computers. So we'll get that going just because then I can, because remember, I've got my, my, uh, my container that I'm gonna build right here so if I come in here and I've got this button I'm gonna dump all my resources first and then I can it'll plot all the resources that I need for that container and if you saw it said I needed a metal grid so that means I need to fly back over to that cobalt and pick it up um, which was this one over here So cobalt is a blue color when you mine down to it. So those mods that I had installed do not actually affect your hand drill and does not extend any of your vision of your hand drill or the ore detector that's built into your hand drill. So you can see if I switch to that it goes away. But it doesn't affect the, the length you can see so it's convenient. It would be nice if it extended the, the range you can see with your drill. Your drill I think is about 50 meters is about the furthest I've ever seen something to show up as a material. So now that we're getting down to three, two, oh, so there's that blue that we're looking for. So that's our cobalt. So we're gonna start mining and picking it up. I'm gonna get some stones because we're first drilling in here. That's okay, because we'll just dump a bunch of the stone. Cobalt's a resource though that takes a lot of time to, to actually refine in your basic refineries. So, it's something that I like to have kind of going in the background, it's not something that, you know, if, I am, if I'm needing iron or any of those other resources, I will prioritize that inside there, and cobalt kind of gets shafted and stuck to the very end of the queue, but it looks like we're collecting quite a bit here, since our character's inventory is so much larger, that should actually give me quite a bit. Actually, I am going to pick up some ice while I'm here. So we'll drop this. Stone 5,000 cobalt is a lot. We got some ice in here. I'll just pick up some of this. Just so I've got it. It's handy to have ice sitting around because that's what you need to refill your hydrogen tanks with. And if you go into space, your oxygen tanks. With. Okay. Respawn. Okay. And so, as you can see, I've built that uh, thing, but I can still access it until I build it up a little bit more. So you kind of have to be careful that you don't build stuff up way far before you can actually get around it. So, especially since I don't have a whole lot of ways to access it at the moment. So I'm going to drop my cobalt in here. My ice, I do not have a place to actually store my ice right now that I know of. So if I pick it up on this side, you can see where I could, but... Yeah, it doesn't let you put it in that. And I know I can't stick it in the refinery. So, I know for a fact that I have the O2H2 over here. Then I can set that in there for now. I'm going to restock my hydrogen tank. So I can fly around some more. Um, let's see, what else could we need? We might need some silicon shortly here but let's see if I've got those metal plates built yet a uh, metal grid sorry so I don't have my cobalt okay so my nickel is also kind of one of those things that takes a really long time 
So we're going to switch that around and get my cobalt going. And I need some small tubes, so... And those are going right now. And that should be enough to finish this up. So now I can throw my ice in here if I wanted. But it also gives me a lot of places that I can hook other things to it. So, <clears throat> next we're going to go over the G menu and the assembler. The assembler has some really cool advantages over the basic assembler. So I'm going to put that in the build planner, control 2, and the, add that in over here as well. I really like to have a full assembler ready to go before I start trying to build a ship. It just makes things a whole lot easier. So, let's see what all we have as far as resources for this. I'm short computers. So I'm going to move that up to the priority list. So those get going. So I've got, so you can see right there, there's the small ones, which are used for like your yield and your refinery. There's like some some units you can build onto your assembler and your refineries to make it more efficient or yield higher or anything like that. So we don't want to use that that square one with the assembler. You want to use the ones on the ends because the they take two. I'll show you what they look like. Yield. Oh, I don't know if I've got it developed yet. I think I actually have to have the assembler in place before I can do it for the refinery. Oh, so it's these things right here. So you've got a speed module, a yield module, and a power efficiency module. And so you build those on the side, but they take two of those little things. So you build one across that face right there. And so you don't really want to put stuff in the way that's going to cause that to hinder. So... I'm going to build this like this. It kind of looks funny, but we're going to build that up. I'm going to come over here, grab the rest of my components that I need. So if you notice, this is taking a good amount of time. So... Now that I've got this new assembler, so if I come over to any of my things, I can go in here, look at my assembler. So now we're, so you've got your basic assembler and your full assembler. We can look at tools now. So you can actually build better, you know, drills or grinders or welders, but you need resources in order to do it. So silver is one that you need in order to build the second or like almost the best which I might that might be a consideration but at this point so the cool thing though now that we have the full assembler if we go in here and say that I am building a say I'm building a refinery because that's another important thing I I want um, so in here so I see the basic refinery and, and then the full refinery so if I click on this, it puts everything in the production queue of what I will need in order to build that, which is super convenient. Because then if I go over to my G to my refinery, I can put this down here. And then after a while, as long as it has all the resources to build everything, that will fill up and I should be good. But I'm so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick up some iron or some steel plates so I can build that platform out a little bit more some place for my refinery to go sweet so then I'm going to come into here refinery I need to add it to my control 2 menu Okay, so the refinery, you can see it's got some ports on it. There's actually one more on the top. And then you've got these like things on the side so we can run multiple of those yield or whatever we want to do on that side. I normally like to do the yields on them. I'll explain why once we get kind of further in though. So I'm going to build that on there. Just 
start building away. So I can carry everything that I need so far, so I'm going to collect more of it. And I'm at max weight again. Okay, so as you can see here, it's still saying that I need more steel plates, and that's just because I had steel plates in my inventory before I actually, like, pulled it out. So, if you just right click on it, we'll get rid of it since we know it's built. Okay, so now the refinery is built, so this refinery is a whole lot more efficient and a lot better. So, but the problem is, is now let's come look at our battery see what kind of so we're seven hours and that's with two turbines going so we really need to get a ship going that we can go mine stuff with whether it be ice or any of these other resources so in order to do that let's start building so the easiest way to build a ship and get started is you're going to build just a steel armor plate just stick it in the ground somewhere you don't need to finish it um, and then we're gonna build a landing gear so this ship I want to build is small so I'm gonna press that same button again so this is the landing gear we've already worked with them before they're on the the respawn thing over there and so we're gonna try to build this right above that plate oh well I don't really like that one I don't want it to to fall so if you do the insert and delete keys you can rotate it I don't want it on the edge like that I want it more towards the center so and then I'm just gonna grind off this other one okay and then we're gonna go to G and then landing gear so the small one selected right now I'm gonna drag that across something else I know that I'm gonna need is a large cargo container in the small variant so let's just drag both those things across real fast. So we're gonna come over here. I'm going to leave that steel plates in there just because you always need more steel plates. Come up over here. So, now that we've got that built, it is attached to the green, means it attached to the blue, means that it's free floating. So now I can take this and I can build armor plates off of it and try to get myself kind of out of the way so when we're done with the ship we'll cut these off okay and then I never added my large container to this so you can see when we're building with the small things they have a different port size so this is the small conveyor port size and then we've got the large like we do on the other so kind of have to be strategic with where you want these you have to understand which way is going to be the front which way is going to be the back so I'm going to build it so I know for a fact I need a conveyor out the bottom so if, if you already have it on there you can snap to it so if I build it like that that gives me some ports or a small port on the top. Um, I want it slightly different though. So you can see, yep, yeah, that's the way I want it right there. Okay, and then we're going to. So this ship, we're not as concerned about landing. So. We are going to build it like that, and then I need some place for me to be, so I need my cockpit. So we're going to place that with this, and I know for a fact I'm going to need some batteries, because this is going to be an atmospheric thruster type of design. So we're going to grab some batteries. I'll explain why I grabbed three of those once we get going. I know for a fact that I'm going to need more batteries built. But, as you can see, my production queue stopped for some reason, so I need to come back over here 
So it's saying iron is an issue, so if I go basic assembler, we've got some silicon in there. Yeah, my assembler, we don't have any iron. So I am probably going to need to go build that, but let's see if I've got enough stuff for my cockpit. Let's see if I can build it. So I could build this station control thing, but I'm not as concerned about that at the moment. Um, maybe I built this not the way I wanted most. Okay, so for whatever reason, you build it so you're not happy with it. You just come over to it and you cut it off. And I'll explain why in a minute, why I did not like it the way it was. C7 is... Okay, so I want a large one on the top and a large one on the bottom, right? And then we're going to do a small one on the front, like that. So we're going to come in here, we're going to finish building this up real fast. It just takes energy, essentially, to do it. Okay, and then I'm going to build this. So if you look on the bottom, we've got a large and then a small and then two on the back. So I want my front of my ship to be that way. And of course I don't have enough resources for it. So, let's see if I can grab whatever I need from here. So, I don't necessarily need bulletproof glass yet. That's one of those things that's later on the list that gets you past, you know, you're in the functional. But as you can see, I'm missing the bulletproof glass, but I can still get in. There's no power at the moment, but I can still get in. So, I need to go get some more iron. So I'm going to drop all my stuff here, and let's see, our iron, if I press all, it shows all the names, it's over here. Uh, actually, before we go, I want to recharge my battery, I'm at 41%, so it also has to do with the heaters as well, so since it's nighttime, it can get cold, so I can sit here, recharge, it's always a good time to check on your battery to make sure that you're not sucking too much power out of them so we're going to recharge in seven hours so both of my wind turbines are in optimal wind clearance which is a good sign that's what you want and we've got some stored power so if a meteorite came down and took out my wood turbines i'd still be fine it wouldn't be the end of the world so now that i'm recharged i'm ready to go So I've got my iron hole that I dug previously. I'm just going to go down into it. Looks like I've got a bunch of stone down here. No, oh, that's definitely iron. I'm going to crouch so that I can get in. Start crawling. Okay, and we're gonna head back over. I don't know if I, uh, I did grab some stone, that's okay. It just gives me some silicon as well and some nickel, which is convenient sometimes. So I think where we're gonna see issues though is the fact that I haven't started up this refinery yet. Once I turn this on, it's really gonna, it's really gonna suck a lot of power. So, I'm going to dump this in here, and you can hear it starting up, let's come check the battery and see what that, okay, we're going to deplete it in two hours, so we can't be running that all the time, if we run it all the time, we're not going to have power, and then 
that battery is pretty much useless. But that's okay. For now, I'm not going to be running it for two hours. So let's see. We've got some more steel plates coming. Um, let's see. So I was going to do batteries. Let's see. And I've got my cockpit. So I need to build more batteries. So. So, G, and then we're gonna go battery. I'm gonna build a couple of these right on the back. They're kind of a different dimensional size than a lot of the other, the other components, but we're gonna just build those up. Okay, well, I screwed it up whenever I dumped everything before because I, yeah, let's see if that was enough. So since I'm flying with this ship, I want to try to make sure everything is 100%, otherwise if for whatever reason I bump into something and crash, it can actually cause damage to it and it'll cause things not to function, which would be bad. Okay, I need some more of these power cells. It's gonna take time to build, of course. That should be enough though. Okay. So now if I come into my cockpit, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, I've got 8, now 12 days worth of power just in those batteries. So they, when you build them, they're 25% to begin with, and they will continue to discharge depending on what you've got in them right now. Okay, so now I need to build some thrusters on here. So I need to add some thrusters. We're going to do these atmospheric thrusters. So control, um, can go back in here and change this. So yep, we've got some of those. I'm going to build a couple of large ones and some smaller ones just to try to correct. So you have to have a thruster in every dimension that you want to be able to go. Oh, and I fell down in my hole. So let's come over here. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just make sure I got stuff for it. So this is so that's the large box is the small box and most spirit thrusters. I know that I wanted two of those and I had a bunch of these selected. It's saying I'm not gonna have enough materials, but we'll see if we make it. So I'm gonna dump all this other stuff, pick up. It's saying I've got a shortage of motors, which they're building right now. So that is the large motor for the small. So with these, you need to be able to have access above and below them. So like you would think, these vents on the bottom, you don't want to stand in front of them and they will hurt you. So actually, I'm not going to put two. Let's see if we can make it with one. So. You don't want to block down under here, otherwise it will hurt you whenever it's thrusting. You can break stuff. So, now there's that. I need a forward thruster. I'm going to build that as a large one as well. And a back thruster. Those are definitely not level. Let's see if we can fix that. It's not as crucial that it looks pretty, but if you're building it, why not make it look decent, right? I think it was there. Yeah. This one's going to be a little asymmetrical in the sense that you don't have two forwards and two backs. And I'm short motors. OK, 
Okay, so now if I were to fly this, if I tip, if I rotate, so if I go like this, it has nothing to stop it for, and bring it back across. So I need to add some ones as well underneath. Some smaller ones. Normally your force on the sides are not as great as what you have. So let's make sure those aren't going to interfere with anything. You don't want to cook anything when they get going. Okay. And then there's one last thing we need to put in here, and it's a gyroscope. So the gyroscope allows you to do that pivoting that we talked about, which is super important, and in order to look and stuff. So we're gonna just build this right at the bottom. Um, I need some more steel and computers. I don't know why I'm almost out of steel, but apparently I am. And steel. Let's build that. So now we should have a fully flyable ship. So if you notice though, there is no thruster that's faced up. If you were flying into space where there's no gravity, then yes, I would need one. But since I'm on Earth, I unless I flip my thing upside down, there's no reason for me to. So I'm not going to cut off that that uh, landing gear yet, so if I press V I can get out of the side of it. So to unlock that landing gear, I'm going to press P. And now I'm flying. So if I press spacebar, it's the exact same way as flying with your jetpack, so I can fly around. But I need to add one more thing to it, so now that I'm a little closer, because I'm going to need more resources, I'm going to come down. Oh, I'm in the hole. Now it's locked. So all you have to do is fly and then it automatically locks when you get close to something. So there's two more things I need to add. One is our connector. Um, maybe I don't have a per connector. So I need to build, it's this connector right here is what I need. Which means that I need to build some conveyor belt tubes or ejectors which we'll get a little bit more into ejectors. But having a large conveyor junction is never a bad thing. So, conveyor junction, I am going to build a large one on side of my station. I'm gonna get rid of my basic assembler. That's not as important right now. Since I use this port a lot, so the the problem with these conveyors, though, is you can't actually access through them. I'll show you what I mean. So I can't press K on this and actually see anything. So I need to come to these other ones that have the actual keypad, which is fine. So now that I built it, now that I can build a connector. I'm building a small connector. I will need to build a large connector on the base itself. So I will put on my building a small one and a large one. So we pick up the resources for both. So where I'm gonna put this is up here on top. And then on this one, I'm gonna put it on the bottom. Make sure that it's facing down. And apparently I am too close to the ground right here. So let's readjust this. So if you press Alt, you can rotate around, you can zoom in and out. So I'm going to try to land this back on this. And it's landed, okay. So now I've got my connector in place. Perfect. Okay. And the last thing is our drill. Uh, that didn't sound good. Let's build this real fast. Okay. 
now those two can mate the same way that the landing gears do. But let's see, drill. I need to add a spot for a drill. And then we are building small drills. I'm going to build three of them. Uh, yeah, let's just build three of them for now. So, add all of our stuff to it. So, I don't want it, since this is the front, I don't want it facing like this. But since my thing is more on the skinny side, I'm going to build it like this. And then you they've got ports on the back and then on the top and the bottom if I do it like this. Kind of going to be an interesting looking miner, but hey, gets the job done, so. Okay, so, I spoke too soon. There's one other thing. Oh, there's some nice lightning back there. One other thing that I want to add is lighting. So we've kind of got some like different options for lighting and what we want to do. I'm choosing the spotlight because it's it's a really bright beam, kind of the same way that your lights are. So we got some nice rain now. So we need a nice flat surface to put these on, which will be interesting because we don't really have a whole lot of flat surfaces, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, you need steel plate, which I don't have any at the moment. So, the bolt proof glass is just to make sure that you don't break it. So I'm going to kind of stick these up near the cockpit just to allow me to see things. And as you can see, they're shooting out a pretty sweet beam. Okay. So, let's see oh, we can fly. Okay, so I'm going to jump out. It's, see, it's still flying. It just hovers as long as you've got power. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to cut that off. And it's just going to fall. Ready for our next ship, right? So I'm going to come over here and I am going to land this right so when it's yellow, it means it's ready to dock, and you have to press P. So it's kind of magnetic, so I can still take off, but it sucks back in, and you press P, and green means your parking is engaged. And it now, it actually is charging the battery. So if I, if I come in here, I can see hopefully the batteries are charging. So the white means that that's on my current ship, so it's going to recharge in 12 hours. It's a really long time. So, another way to speed this up, because I really would like to speed this up, um, would be adding like a hydrogen engine or more of those turbines or some solar, but the problem with solar is whenever it's dark we're not going to charge anything, so um, I'll show something else before we do that. And then maybe we can go find some ice once the weather clears up a little bit. So I'm going to release the parking brake, fly up a little bit so I'm not connected to the station. And now if I press G, it brings up my the selection for my block. So if I go to block tools, we've got our drill. So if I drag this drill down to the toolbar, it should now, when I press left click, it's going to drill the same way and it's going to collect and put stuff back inside my my cargo, but then if I write, it's going to drill the same way and just aug through stuff. So let's bring it back down. It's an important fact. Put our parking brake on. Recharge our battery, make sure everything's good. Sweet. 
So now we want to wait till the weather kind of clears up. Because we need to go get some ice. So we can start building the stuff for it though. So I'm going to build a hydrogen engine and an O2 generator. So let's go to our O2 generator. We're going to build one of those and then we're going to build a hydrogen engine. Which, I guess, I have not researched enough yet. So, in order to, I need to build that O2 generator. I'm going to add that to down here. So you can build a hydrogen generator for your ship, or you can build it for larger things. I'm going to grab everything I need. Need some more steel plates. So you can see there's on the opposite sides and then on the long side as well. So let's build this. Make sure we've got a port on the side. So we don't have enough steel plates, it won't be full health, but that's good enough. Hydrogen, okay. So this hydrogen engine is going to uh, produce power for us, but we need hydrogen from our O2 generator in order to do it. So it looks pretty sweet. The problem with these, just so you guys are aware, so they've got one port on the front and then one on the bottom. So they're kind of a weird shape. So let's see if we can get all of our materials for it. Apparently we do. So this is the side that doesn't have, that's the side that has the... I'm going to build that, and now I've got a port hanging off the edge. So I'm going to build this up. I'm going to need to get some ice though in order to put this and get it working. So one way to tell if this is working is this fan on the end should be rotating, which it means it's not, and that's fine because I don't have any ice. So if I come over here, I am going to try to take some ice out of here. I'm going to right click, drag across, because I don't want to pull all of it, because if I pull all of it and I need to refill my hydrogen pack later on, it makes it really difficult to do so. So, I'm going to come right to this port on the bottom, and let's see, the O2 generator. So if I type in the top, I know I need to put it in the O2 generator, and it's going to start producing hydrogen. So, let me go in here, hydrogen motor, I'm going to turn it on and turn it off, turn it off and then turn it back on again. Then let's look at the O2 generator and see what's going on with that. We've got a required input of 500 kill. I wonder if that's. We might not have enough power. We might be draining everything we've got. Depleted in 8 hours. Interesting. Let's make sure that we put the ice in the right location. It's in the O2 generator. Let's see. Okay, sometimes the hydrogen motors, I thought they fixed this with an update. Apparently they haven't. So we're going to exit out of the game and restart the game real fast. So we're going to save, we're going to exit, sure, and then we're going to start right back into the same game and see if that fixes it, because sometimes these hydrogen motors, they are a little finicky, but once they get going, they're not bad. They, they work really well. Oh, and see now it's starting to spin, which means we've got additional power. So now if I come over here to my battery... It's going to recharge in 57 minutes. So those other ones up there should also be recharging. 
but something to bear in mind let's take a look at our O2 generator and how much ice we've already burned through I put 4,000 in there and we're already down to three so I really need to go find some ice but the problem I'm gonna have is a so collecting ice is the easiest when you have a lake so let's see if I can fly up Let's make sure I've got hydrogen in my tank. I do not have enough hydrogen in my tank to feel comfortable flying up really high. I'm looking for a, a lake. So, I need to be on this one. Let's refill that tank up. Reason why I left ice in there. So I bet you this hydrogen engine is already probably... Oh, it's still going. Sweet. So we're just going to fly up really high, try to get above the clouds. Okay, so we're looking for a body of water, because it is really easy to get hydrogen off of bodies of water. I'm still not seeing it. I'm like 3Ks up. I want our maiden voyage of our miner to be to get ice, because ice is a good power source. There's some though, which is nice. Nice sunrise. Oh, I'm getting high enough that my mask needs to be on. And if you look at the bottom right of my thing, you can see my gravity is actually shifting as well. I am not seeing a good water source. I'm way up. Sometimes you can find them, sometimes you can't. So you can kind of see the atmosphere. We are definitely getting outside of that, which is fine. I'm wondering if I go over here, if there's some water. Uh, let's try over here first. seeing a frozen lake let's go back I will there is that ice that's like kind of right near me so if you press Z we're gonna turn our dampers off it means that our jetpack is still running but we're not using hydrogen it's not correcting it's not gonna make me hover and since I'm just trying to fall and I'm trying to I don't want to use a whole lot of hydrogen I don't need to so now that I'm coming back in, I should be able to take my mask off. I don't want to use a whole lot of oxygen if I don't have to. Okay, and I'm going to press Z because I know that I'm getting closer to the ground and it'll correct me. And a respawn site is kind of hard to see, but we're in here. Okay. So I know for a fact there's ice under here. So let's have at it. So I'm going to jump in my cockpit. I'm going to turn off my parking brake. And I'm going to flip around. That's that gyroscope. This is what the gyroscope does is it rotates you. 
and I'm gonna tilt down and I'm gonna right hand just I'm just gonna aug check out as much material as I possibly can. It's going to make a nice wide hole for me so that I can see everything. So I don't know if this white stuff, I don't, maybe in a recent update they made this ice, made it water, less, I'm going to left click, and then we're going to hit K, look at our inventory, so that is ice, which is good news. So, I can continue to drill through this. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, you can see my overall weight of my whole spacecraft. You can see how long my batteries are going to last. And then there is a battery percentage under there. So the battery percentage is how much battery power am I using to do what I'm doing. So since I'm running atmospheric thrusters, if I press spacebar, it changes. And then if I press a bunch of buttons at the same time, so that's why I put three batteries. If I had only a single one, me trying to fire multiple thrusters would not give me full power. It would give me, I wouldn't be able to, to do as much as I can right now. It would like throttle out. And so sometimes you'll get stuck in a spot where you need to be able to run your thrusters 100% and not having enough battery power, enough batteries, because they have a, a maximum output they can make, it means you can't go. So that, this is quite a bit of ice, so let's see how much ice we've got, 17,000, and that's just sitting inside of my large cargo container, so I can just keep on drilling away. If I pick up any stone, it's not the biggest deal, it's just going to convert it into that gravel and the nickel and the stone again. But as, as I'm getting more full, so if I press space, I don't move as fast. So let's let's come back down and I'll mine a little bit more. And you'll be able to see that as I gain more weight, my aircraft or my spacecraft is not going to be as agile. It's going to be a little slower. Okay. So now I'm going to run spacebar. It's just definitely not as agile as it was with the when I first started out. So I'm just going to keep on mining away, kind of rotating back and forth, try to keep my hole big enough because I want to make sure my spacecraft itself fits in too. Uh oh. So let's try to land this. I really don't want to lose my ship if this meteor storm is coming in. Okay, we're going to turn our parking brake, and now all that ice is going to get sucked out and brought down into my O2 generator. But let's see, oh, it's missing us. Can't always guarantee it's going to miss you, though. So, now we're going to, in the next video, we're going to show you how to protect against meteor storms and try to really get our base. But now this first video, we've really made an improvement. We've got our spacecraft that we can now go mine stuff. We can go pick up iron, we can go pick up whatever resource we need in order to, to build stuff and continue on. Hopefully in the next video we will go into outer space. Um, stay tuned for the next one. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you guys later.